Okay, can you start over, Patrick? I didn't okay. get the recording on. I tried to explain why we are an American Indian, okay, last night. You need to break these words down. In a lot of cases, uh, an Indian is two words, I-N and then D-I-A-N. An N basically means in possession of, and D-I-A-N, you go into the dictionary and you'll find that it's dynamic. Okay? And basically when you look up what the word dynamic means, and uh, you'll see that when you put the two together, you'll come up with the understanding of where you're standing as an Indian. Okay? When everybody does something out here, and basically the vast majority of the people are going in one direction, you want to go in the opposite direction. Because if the majority are going in one direction, they've got to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? Bottom line. The majority never goes in the right direction. Because they're being herded into the wrong direction. And that's what's gone on in this country. Everything that uh, has been deceived, uh, I mean, basically by the religions, by everything out here. The vast majority of people are being herded by the controllers to take you in the wrong direction, to lie to you, to deceive you. And one of the biggest deceptions in this country was that the cowboys were the good guys and the Indians were the bad guys. So that basically you always wanted to stay away from being classified as an Indian. But yet, here in America, the Indians are the foundation of this nation. Okay, they're the source of all real power. They ceded part of their land over to the public corporation, United States, for the public lands, for the people coming over here. So they were nice guys, the Indians were. But yet the white man tried to come in and take even more from them. So who is the bad guy? The cowboys. Okay. Not the Indians. That's why when you really study what was going on, someone's got their mic open or feedback. Okay, try and mute them out, Tom. Okay. And we are an American and a state insular Indian. Okay, we were born as an insular, a body of land surrounded by water. And if you go into the definite or the a Wikipedia website, it will say that basically the Department of Interior is over uh, insulars also. You look at uh, the SS4 uh, form or SS5 form for the Social Security. We know that one person went out there and uh, put in as a not as a alien allowed to work in and basically got uh, her renewal uh, Social Security number and. Then she went and got a passport and got a different colored passport. Well, I think there's a little more to it that she did, and basically she she probably marked American Indian because that's what everybody is. There is no native Indian on the form under ethnicity, under ethnic backgrounds, okay? 
It's just American Indian. But yet it's got uh, Alaska Native. It's got uh, a couple others on there. Why doesn't it have Native Indians? Because they see the Native Indians did not and do not need to have a Social Security because they're their own nation. Now, if they want to come off the uh, reservation and work out in the public world, in the public reservation, then they need to get a uh, Social Security card. But at that point in time, they'd be classified as an American Indian. And also as an alien allowed to work in the public reservation. The American Reservation was created by basically the Tenth Amendment in the Bill of Rights. When you reserve something, you make a reservation. And our powers were reserved to us, so basically our powers are on this reservation. And these forms, especially this... 1035-0003 form will substantiate that. If you follow me going through it and you sit and think about this and take notes when you go through. But we are an American Indian. We're not a U.S. citizen. We're an American Indian on the American reservation and also on the state reservation that we were born from. Now, you can move from one reservation to another. Now, we're going to go into the form that can... 35003 form. And this is from the Office of Special Trustee for American Indians. Office of Trust Funds Management. Well, first off, you need to know what the trust fund action is. How are they doing it? You need to know that we have a foundation share of the country out here from our birth. A share of stock in the United States of America and also a share of stock in the state that we were born in. Those are the asset value that basically is what is being used in the trust fund management out here. The name of the tribe is your name in all capital letters. It's also your leasing name. Okay? The date that that was put in, and then the address of the tribe. Okay? That's your address. Phone number. Name of the tribe chairman. That's you. Now... Line six, docket number or other identification trust fund. Well, what is that? A docket number is a court case number. Now, when you go down below into section B, specific regulatory requirements, 25 CFR, 1200, 1200, Point thirteen, but you need to know a little more about some of the words there. You need to know what resolution means. What is a tribal resolution? Results of tribal referendum, if required by Constitution. So 
Some of you people never break out the damn dictionary and look at these things. Referendum. Okay? The power reserved to the people at their own option to approve or reject at the polls an act of the legislature. You read further on, and you will see that basically you have the power. Now you go back to Article 10. Powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. So, and you are a tribal, okay? You can be a tribal of one. I mean, you have a family. So, results of tribal referendum. You can check that one. Tribal resolution. Okay? You need to know what resolution means. And basically, uh, that means that you do a, uh, you resolve something the same way you do a referendum. Hello? Just a second. Oh, sorry. I thought I got disconnected. I get booted occasionally. Uh, I'm trying to pull something up here. I thought I had it up. It's not taking me a little time to get it up here. Resolution. An expression of the opinion or mind of a municipal council concerning some matter of administration and providing for the disposition thereof being less formal than an ordinance or requiring no seat set form of words. Okay? See, you can, you have the opinion, you have free will. You need to start using your free will. All of these bar courts that they take you into are corporate courts. You, as an Indian, American Indian, are not under their jurisdiction, period. And basically, they cannot force you into fraudulent contracts. And all those contracts, the driver's license, the certificate of title to your vehicle, the insurance policies out here. They're all contracts of fraud. You have never been given the benefits that they promised to you. The driver's license was supposed to pay for the traffic tickets. The title to the vehicle was supposed to pay for all the taxes on the vehicle and all the licensing of the vehicle. The certificate of title to your house was supposed to pay for the property taxes. That is what is the trust fund status, is these false trusts that they set up. And that's what you can do an application to withdraw tribal funds from these trusts status instruments. 
So your docket number, if the court issues you a case number, they have bonded that case against your tribal assets. That's the tribal funds that you're coming in after. And you're doing an application, a withdrawal of your tribal funds from their trust status. So that's what you'll be putting in in line six. When you want to shut down the Social Security account, basically you put in the Social Security account number in there. Other identification of trust fund. Well, Social Security is a trust fund instrument. Now, for the Social Security, you won't know the dollar value. And in some court cases, you won't know the dollar value either. You just put down full value. Now, if you have a appearance bond or a traffic citation, you list the docket number. You identify what it is, whether it's the case number, the citation number, or whether it's the appearance bond. And basically, you should have the values for those. You put those in there. You put your name and title of the person submitting the application. And then you say whether it's a judgment fund or whether it's a settlement fund. I would make most of them all settlement funds unless you had a judgment fund against you. So where the court basically put the charges against you, then it's a judgment fund. And see, that's a court case. Then you would mark that one. And then you send this in to the office of the special trustee. You can hand one of these also, a copy of this, into the court. Because that court is also an agent for the office of special trustee. But I would always follow up with one of those going in to, uh, and basically I'd do one for the court case and then one for the appearance bond if you have traffic tickets. See? They can't write laws against you. Okay? People don't understand half of this stuff. They go out and they argue a thing. But basically, reservation Indians. Look that up in the dictionary. Indians living on Indian reservations. We are an Indian, and we're living on an Indian reservation, the American public Indian reservation. While they are so living, the jurisdiction of the federal government over their tribes and over the members of such tribes is exclusive, and they cannot be controlled or governed by the laws of the state within which the reservation Reservations are located, except as such laws are specifically authorized by Congress or clearly do not interfere with federal policies concerning Indian reservations. Now, I'm sorry to say that 99% of all the damn codes of law and everything else are in total violation of what I just read there. They're corporate laws. They do not apply to us American Indians. As an American Indian, you do not owe taxes. Like I stated before, all of these subcontracts, the driver's license and everything else, they were all done in fraud because they tried to make you a leaser to them. They're already the lease E to us. They leased our assets from us. 
So we're the least or, they're the leasee. Now they're trying to turn around and make us a leasee to them. But see, we were the landlord at the very beginning. And there's a maximum of a law that a landlord cannot be the tenant also at the same time. It's an impossibility. Because you would just be paying yourself. That's what I've been trying to tell you people out here. You need to start studying. You need to talk this stuff over amongst yourself. You need to build your confidence. You need to understand who the hell you really are. And stop listening to 99% of these other people out here that are going over the damn cliff in a herd mentality. So basically that application to withdraw tribal funds is very simple. You can use that in any court case. You can basically address it to the judge. Say, I I need a little help here filling this thing out. I'm an American Indian, and I quite don't understand this. Can you help me? You're supposed to be an agent for the reservation. Now, here's the kicker. All these guys that have bar cards, they are barred from being an American Indian. (laughs) <laughs> that's what they are barred from they can't be an American Indian so they don't have these protections as long as they hold that bar card if they revoke that bar card and reject it and get over on back to the reservation yes we'll take them back into the reservation but get rid of that damn bar card now, Isn't how many like of them you think will do that? Huh? Isn't that like the mafia, though? How do you get out of there? You just quit. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you get back behind the real government, and basically you might find that there are some protections out here for those. You get a new ID, uh, identification, and everything, and be hidden. Under like under the witness protection program. Right. Okay. There's there's ways around all of this stuff. Those men in black can do just about anything imaginable. Dude, and cut your head off. Right. Now, we'll still end up doing a uh, follow-up on some of these items. We'll let the Secretary of the State know that we're in communication with the uh, Office of Special Trustee for American Indians and that we are an American Indian. And now, since they are the state uh, reservation agent, They had better be fulfilling our requirements, or else we will go to the office of special trustee and turn them in. And there has been a lot of uh, reservation agents go to jail. And like I said, there was one... uh, Back in 19 or 1834, that's on the books for a violation of reservation violations by the agents and other people. The laws are out here, it's just the people have been looking at the damn wrong laws in most cases. 
because they didn't know that they were an American Indian. They didn't know what real protections they had. You think that the laws that are written on the books about uh, the American Indians are for the reservation. No. They've got their own nation. They write their own laws over there. So the laws that are on the books talking about the American Indians, they apply to us. If we stop being the cowboy and get over and put our war bonnet on or our peace bonnet on and act as an Indian. And yes, the religion and the money changers and uh, uh, the corporations and all the other people out there have been at constant war against the Indians, and that doesn't mean under the native Indian reservations, but also the American people Indians. Just take a look at it. We're being treated no different than those reservation, native reservation Indians out here. They do genocide against us just as much as they do against the, the native Indian tribes. Because America was founded on being classified as an Indian and operating on reservations. Now, you can come out and claim your private seat out here as your private reservation or reserve or preserve, whatever you want to call it, homestead, enterprise, but it's private. Now, it's located within the public jurisdiction. but you're still an American Indian in the private. Therefore, you have all the protections as an Indian. You don't have to pay taxes. You don't have to have a driver's license. You don't have to have all this other stuff that's out here. And you get your dividend checks Every, whenever you want them. Now, since I brought up the dividend checks, I guess everybody really wants to know what we do with Form 0004. Because everybody wants money. <laughs> okay. Okay, so... Everybody got their 10 form up out here. Yes. Ready. Question, though. Jeff, are you on the line? Jeffrey. I don't see him. Go ahead, Pat. You're on the line? Yes, I am. Okay. This is a guy that basically told me about the MIB yesterday. Mm. After he pulled himself up off the floor when he found it, <laughs> and then he drove me out of the damn chair, I jumped from the ceiling. I said, hell, we've got it now. Okay, the address that I'm talking about is this one address at uh, uh, Washington, D.C. there, MS-4141-MIB. 
and MIB, men in black. And what have we been looking for? We've been looking for the men in black to come in and straighten some of this shit out. Tried to figure out what the 4141 meant. Well, basically, you add up 41 and 41, and basically, uh, as individual numbers, and you end up with 10. And basically, 10 is perfect. Unless you go into that one movie, and I think it was uh, 12, that basically she was supposed to be a 12 to be perfect. But I don't think there's ever been a 12. But 10 is also an amendment. Perfect out there. Okay, anyway, on to this 1035-0004 form. The title of it is Individual Indian Monies IIM. Instructions for distribution of funds and change of address. Office of Special Trustee for American Indians. And then it's got their website, and then it's got a a phone number if you have questions. And it's toll free. Don't be afraid to talk to these people. Okay? They will be shell-shocked if you end up getting this far. (laughs) <laughs> okay, number one, I am, I, I am account number or tribal ID number, if known. Well, your IIM account number, as far as I can see, is basically your uh, certificate of live birth registration number. Okay. In most cases, it's going to be an 11-digit number, three digits, dash, two digits, dash, six digits. But if you have some other number in sequence, and I don't want to hear a damn thing about it on the call tonight. I've talked enough about that. Whatever you get, you put it in there. If you need to, send a copy of your birth certificate along with this. Or call them up on the phone and ask them. But don't get on the call and ask any more about how do I get this number? How do I do this? How do I do that? You call these other people up and ask them. Okay, number two, current legal name of account holder. Other names used. Okay, so that's going to be the name that's on the account. Whatever's on your certificate of live birth. If you've used another name like I have, uh, the name that's on my birth certificate is Patrick Devine. No middle name. But I've used other names out here as Patrick Paul Devine. So basically they've utilized that out here in the process too. Date of birth. Put your date of birth. If you have a social security number, put it down. Okay? We will handle that with that other form to terminate the trust. Put it down. You've got it. Okay? Contact, telephone number, and email address. Okay? If you have a landline, put the phone number down. If you have a cell phone, put that one down. If you have an email address, put that down. Pretty simple so far. (laughs) I don't know how anybody can screw that up, but I'm sure there will be some people. Now, the next one is up to you. Select one of the following options for payment instructions. Automatic distribution of all my funds. I request all my funds to be paid automatically when the account balance reaches the minimum threshold amount. Well, to know what the minimum threshold amount is, you're probably going to have to call them up and ask them. Don't ask me. I don't know. It's a big and I don't give a shit. 
There. Now you got that answer for me. Or specific instructions to distribute my funds. I request that my IMF funds be distributed as follows. Check one box only. Now there's four boxes there. No current distributions. I request that my IMF funds be held in my account until I provide further instructions. So basically, if you're not ready to do anything, you can check that. One-time distribution. I request that a million dollars be paid to me on uh, Wednesday of next week. The balance of my the balance to be held in my IMF or I I I I M account until I provide further instructions. That's the one that I would go with. But it's up to you. Okay, I'm just saying that's what I'm gonna go with. Scheduled distributions of account balance. I request one hundred percent of my account balances to be paid to me and then circle on the following. Monthly, quarterly, annually, starting, whatever. That's 100%. That might be quite a big chunk of money. So you better think about this. And I would go with the one-time distribution, get a few funds, and then fill them in later on, tell them what you want to do with the rest of the account. Or other, I requested my IMF funds be distributed as follows. Here, send, send a half of it to China, send half of it to uh, uh, Iguana. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. It's up to you. Third-party payment. Now, if you wanted to buy a vehicle, basically you can make, have the payment made out to them. Made out to who? That pretty much addresses through five. Now you go to six. Method of payment. Direct deposit into a checking or savings account. I strongly do not recommend that. That's what got you into a lot of this damn trouble to begin with. Dealing with commercial banks. And basically, they can shut their door on you at any time, and you just lost your funds. So I wouldn't go with that one. The next block is or OST debit card. Yeah, like that one. That's the one I'm going to check. And then if direct deposit or OST debit card is selected, indicate the method of ACH deposit notification. Regular mail, email, text. And text will only go through if you have a cell phone that receives text. That's what they're referring to there. A text message on your cell phone. Or no notification. Or check. But there again, you've got to have a place to be able to cash that check. What's the OST debit card? You can ask them when you talk to them, okay? Then line seven. Mailing address. You put down your mailing address. Then eight. Your signature or mark. And then number nine. And this is pretty damn simple. Number nine. Witness of account holder's signature or mark. You just go get somebody that's over the age of 18 and basically says that you signed this. They just sign it, print their name, print their address, phone number, city and state, and zip code. 
no account number, no nothing. Okay. No yeah. notary, no seals, no nothing. Pretty damn simple form. And then everything else on the next on the bottom part of that page is for the OST use only, not for you. So the account number, the service center number, and uh, the other number down there, and the CSS number, you don't do anything with those. Those are for the OST. And then page three is also for the OST. And that's where you would call in and basically give a a change of address over the phone or whatever. I think the OST is the Office of uh, Special Trustee. Office of Special Trustee, OST. And then you still have to uh, process and do your exemption, your claim of exemptions out here for your property. Put it in. You have to claim your uh, reserve, your reservation, your private reservation. That basically was not claimed when we were born. That's what our parents didn't do, okay? The registration was not the bad thing. It was basically that our parents didn't claim the private Indian reservation for us at our birthing within the 90-day time frame for the preemption entry. We still would have had everything else out there because the courts had already given us, authorized our shares of stock to be given to us. So we were already put on the reservation as an Indian. But see, most of these attorneys and judges, they can't say a damn thing to us about this because they are barred from saying anything. And they're also barred from being an American Indian because they sold their soul to the devil. Oh, yeah. Now you've got the rest of tonight and you got all day tomorrow because tomorrow's a damn holiday. And basically, normally that's the way it happens. Every time we get close to something that really should be, uh, we should be turning out the next morning, uh, lo and behold, here's another damn oh, stinking okay. government holiday <laughs> to try and hold us up. <laughs> Neighbor Day. Yeah, how ironic, Labor Day. Yeah. Waking our asses up. Okay, Chuck, do you have anything more to say about this? No, I think just when we were bouncing around, I mean, Pat just brought up this Department of Interior. I Google it, and while he's on the phone, we're just going through pages and seeing what catches our eye. And it didn't take more than a couple of minutes, maybe three to five minutes, getting familiar with that site. And with all the forms we've filled out and done, this is so self-explanatory. If you're an American Indian, what are you waiting for? I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I was shocked <laughs> when I saw how simple this was. Yeah, yeah uh, I mean, IRS form 1035, that's a 
exchange. When you're in real estate, you do exchanges to avoid taxes. And here, these are control number 1035. These are nothing but exchanges at the reservation. Yeah, I see the Indians, they don't pay taxes, okay? Just like the Amish. Basically, once you get into the private, uh, they don't pay taxes. Property taxes or income taxes. That's why they can buy property for more than what most everybody else is because they're not having to pay all that damn stinking government tax and uh, keeping, uh, taking the money away from their back pocket. <laughs> but see, us white men that want to be cowboys and basically think that we're on the good side of the law we're really on the bad side of the law. We're on the corporate side of the law that's out here to destroy this country. Corporations have never put a damn dime back into the people's pockets. But they have sucked one hell of a lot out. Private enterprises, on the other hand, basically are good because they try and work with the people, because they are made up of the people. But, yeah, what uh, Jeff was saying, to look at this, this is what we've been looking for, a du jour form. Something that is very damn simple. It's not really a form. It's just basically it's, it's just no more out. than you. It's no more than you fill out and register, certified or registered mail. There's really nothing more to it. And we're going to your bank and doing a deposit or a withdrawal. Yeah, that's. I we, mean, that's all we're doing here, and basically we're just putting down some information, but it's not. Uh, like the government forms or anything like that, trying to give a substance to a fictional person. Okay, this is a du jour form that basically is we're going after our real assets. And this will also bring down the national debt when we start terminating all these uh, trust funds. But our tribal funds are going to. These trust court, uh, court cases, uh, county bonds, state bonds, whatever. United States bonds that they've been out here writing against all of our tribal assets. Okay, any other questions? Go ahead and open it up, Tom. Okay. Now, we're, we're mailing these, these uh, withdrawal forms in, or can we fax them in? You can fax them in. Okay. That's what I gave you the fax number last night. Right, okay. And basically you get on... And just like Jeff said, that site is not that hard to to go around in. You find out where the office of special trustee is, and then go down through it. And basically, came up with that one office there, that MS uh, forty one forty one MIB, and basically they've got a fax number. So you can there was fax there to them. Pat, just let everybody know there was five addresses there, and it was at the bottom of all the different regional agencies. And then at the bottom was five addresses all going to Washington to the same place, basically. And the very first one had the MIB. And you go with the first one at the top of the list. Yeah. Now, like just said, there are regional addresses there, too. 
okay? So you find out what your regional address is and send it in to them. You can also notify your Secretary of State that basically you know he is basically the Indian uh, reservation agent for the state of whatever reservation. And that you're ordering him to set these items off that are state issues. So you the send court it to the cases, regional everything else, state? you send them, huh? You send it to the regional birthing state or state of residence? The state you're living in right now, okay, is the reservation you're on right now. Yeah. Okay, even though your birthing reservation was somewhere else. Right. Davy Crockett, when he went to Texas to fight in the Alamo, okay, what did they call him? They still called him the Kentuckian. Right. Because that was his birth state. You do both. Hey, before we were looking for a federal discount window, state capitals in this office or this courthouse, but basically this is our Federal Reserve reservation exchange window. This is where you'll get your lawful exchange for a right dollar, and that's why all you do is fill it out, and now you're going to the other side for your processing. Basically that simple. Right. You put it in, and basically they will send it out to the local state area. If they need to have the wet ink signature copy, send it in to them. Ask them. Call them up on the phone. Ask them. It looks like you can even do that. In all cases, unless you ask the damn question. And don't sit there and think you can ask the question on the group. Because half the damn idiots on this damn group don't know the answer to the question. So why in the hell would you want to ask them anyway? Ask the people that know. I, there's a hell of a lot of opinions on this damn website, but they really don't have the damn answers. Okay? That's just a word of warning to you. Now, you can take that for a grain of sand or for a a boulder if you want to. Whatever. You know, your I am I am. Yeah, I'm talking about the Office of Special Trustee website. You're talking about our our stuff? Not Am I muted? Hello? You're on mute. We hear hear everything you're saying. Huh? I can hear you, Tawana. We can hear you. Yeah, but are you talking to somebody there or are you talking to us? I'm talking to you guys. I wouldn't have a, a side conversation during this call. I'm not rude. Well, it's hard to say. (laughs) <laughs> you're you're speaking real well, so basically it's almost like you're talking to somebody there in the room while we're trying to have a conversation here. No, I'm talking to you guys. Okay, then speak up a little more and basically ask what's your question. Your question is about the region? Check out the website. Go to your Secretary of State for your state reservation. Put this into the D.C. office and basically tell them you need to have the region officer contact you, which basically you get this in there. You'll probably have the regional officers officers contacting you anyway. No, you had said something about the, a lot of the opinions on this website are wrong, and they don't yes. know what they're talking about, so I wasn't sure which website you were talking about. I'm talking about We the People group oh, site okay. and uh, then some of the Skype conversations that I'm hearing going back and forth 
on different things about uh, blood lineage and everything else and all this other stuff. And we got to uh, have the Church of Rome and uh, be a censor to all this. Yeah. yeah. That's the type of BS that I'm talking about. But like you said, that the Lone Ranger was the key to the whole thing. Right. You can go watch the movie, right? Hey. Lone Ranger. I haven't seen it. I have to see it. Bingo. Yeah, we're flying over the target right now. We're o- ready to open the Bombay doors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Steve. Yeah. Somebody have a question for me? I think that's somebody else announcing themselves. Oh. Well, is there any other questions on understanding this? Okay, I've got Jeff on the line here. He can probably help you explain to you about that damn uh, OST website if you need to have information. But basically, from what he's saying, it's very simple. You just go into the Department of Interior and you find the OST, the Operational, or the Office of Special Trustee, and then search all the different web pages that they have. I'm afraid to the ask The regions any are divided up into ten regions out here, also. Oh, I didn't know that. They also have an organizational chart. That's how I found this in the first place. I with, with Pat and I were going back and forth, and I was going through the pages real quick, and um, I found organizational chart, clicked on it, and then I found Office of Special Trustee because that's what we were looking for in the beginning. This is how we kind of uncovered it is uh, where is the Office of Special Trustee? Well, we're checking it out. We're Googling it. And next thing you know, boom, you click on that, it takes you right to the forms. Yeah, the way, right to the, the way I found it was that I had one document, okay, about the Department of the Interior on my computer. I completely disregarded anything from the Department of Interior except for this one web page. And it was a Wikipedia page about the Department of Interior. Hmm. And that's right there, and it says right on that web page about this Office of Special Trustee. It also talks about the insular. And when you look up the word insular, area, and see it says insular area, and see that's different than all the other areas that it was talking about before. So you look up the word insular, and basically it's a land that is surrounded by a body of land surrounded by water. And what are you when you come out of your mother's womb? You are surrounded by water, but you are a body of land. And that's what they're referring to. See, you've got to be able to read between the lines in some of this stuff. It's very simple when you think about this. Yeah, also, uh, an insular area. Okay. And that's what I mean. When you come across the word that you're... Not sure about always. Look it up in the dictionary. That's the one thing that everybody should have been given when they went from elementary school to junior high or to high school was a damn dictionary. Mm-hmm. And then they should have avoided going to college because that's just a damn institute for mental idiots. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Ninety percent of those teachers there couldn't do what the hell they think they teach. Mhm. And it's just a uh farming ground for the young minds for the knowledge that they bring to the table. And the instructors 
basically farm their knowledge out and then claim it's theirs. Hmm. Now, see, everybody's in your back pocket from the get-go. Right here on the uh, Department of Interior website, they want to buy back the Indian land. They're like, hey, it passed by so many people that it becomes unusable, and well, uh, you can participate in the land buyback program. They want to, the government wants to buy the Indian land back, so they have it instead of you. Well, what they're yeah, talking about, about, they're trying to get it from the native, from the native Indians. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, they're trying okay. to get them. To- Trying to get yeah, they're to trying to land. buy it back for a nickel, uh, nickel uh, when the damn thing's worth uh, a million. Mm-hmm. There's so much mineral underneath the ground in all land out there that it's more valuable than what most people think. May look may look desolate on the surface. That basically, uh, you put a shovel to it, and basically you dig enough, and you'll find your riches. And that's what this whole thing was about. You have to put the shovel into the dirt to find out where your true assets are. This is just like Nicholas Cage going through with the national treasure. Mm-hmm trying to decipher the damn uh, codes and everything else that they've hidden away in the Declaration of Independence, in the Bill of Rights, in the Constitution, to try and find our national treasure. And here it is, sitting in the office of special trustee, but you have to be an American Indian to get in that door. Right. Yeah, as far as mineral rights, I was looking around at something. There was, like, pictures of different holes in the world, and there's this one hole in South Africa that they got, like, 300 tons of diamonds out of it. Yeah, and everybody thinks that uh, basically that diamond that's on uh, uh, on a woman's finger is real valuable. It, it's worthless as hell. Mm-hmm. They have more warehouses of diamonds sitting over there, and they control the value of the diamonds out here. And they're policing the people. I mean, basically, a diamond is just a shiny stone, and basically, they're they're a dime a dozen. Yeah, in Russia, they have miles of bunkers of them. Yeah. (laughs) And they can manufacture them real easy. Yeah, the zirconiums or whatever the hell, uh, stones. Well, the, the but that's beside stuff. the point, okay? That's right, beside right. the point, okay? Let's right. get on target here. Yeah, I'm just who going through the website. Who doesn't understand about being an American Indian? Who doesn't understand about going into these damn court actions and what protections you have now as an American Indian? Exemption. Got it. <laughs> Patrick, no, it's been a- really good. Good information, real thorough. You've explained everything really well the last couple calls. Yeah. I showed up a little late, so I kind of missed a good bit, but that's all right. I'll- oh, get the okay, call. then you'll have to listen to the audio uh, after uh, we get done here. Uh, excuse me, Tom. Yeah. Did somebody let you know that um, the reservation reentry forms can't be downloaded? No. Yeah, I tried to download them like about five minutes which, before. Which, I, this, which, which if you form? go, if you go into the <laughs> now, Jeff yeah, posted a email up there or a message on the bulletin board. About the links that are I right did. there on the Department of Interior. 
And you can oh, click okay. on those and download them right from the Department of Interior website for the OST uh, for the Office of Special Trustee. The forms are right there on their website. Okay. I just I wanted to you let you guys know out. that it says. Okay. I just I wanted to you let you know. And email them. Okay. I, I just wanted to let you know because it just said that the file was damaged. Well, so I just where did you try to download it from? Um, I tried to download it off of uh, shareholders group site on okay. Yahoo. And that I was able to get the OST or the. Wh- which I'm file sorry. did you say it was? Um, it was the uh, the um, the reservation reentry form. The okay. OST forms were okay. I was able to get them, or the OMBs. I'm sorry, I, I wrote so many notes down, but I just wanted to tell you. The fax um, cover, I have it. Pardon? The yeah, I couldn't cover, get it. Yeah. it. It just comes uh, up for me. I got well, it this, actually because uh, I had a little bit of trouble getting it from that one with the email with the links. That one um, wouldn't open up for me either. But I got okay. it. I went straight to the Yahoo group um, in the puts and orders folder, and that one opened up. Okay. Okay. Uh, you, it was just you, a little hunting, work. actually. If, if you it, read yeah, the other one does work. If, if you read the welcome email, it discusses this. When people say they can't download it, it usually means you haven't logged into Yahoo. Or, or your try your program is not allowing you to open it. You're trying to open it while you're online. Okay. In some cases, you have to download it, save the file to another folder. <laughs> on your hard drive and then open it up. Right. right. Sometimes yeah. your your uh, Aerobat or whatever PDF program or whatever Word document you're using is not compatible with uh, the present uh, web browser. And, and it could also mean that your operating system file association stuff isn't set up properly, so that when you click on the file, it doesn't pull up the right program. It says something wrong with, with the file. Yeah. Or it really That's why you're wrong. best off in all cases to download the form, put it on your files, and then open it up from there. I, I just clicked that file on the Yahoo group, and it, it's fine. I don't know why I can't get it. Download well, it first. I think she talked okay. about that one with the links, the email with the links, because one of those was broken. Yes, ma'am, I am. Not in the Yahoo group, just the email with the links. Okay. Patrick, I have oh. a question about number six on um, uh, the 003. Uh, have we established what the best choice um, is for notating the security account, whether it's the number on the back or the number on the front, or are you going to yell at me and call them and ask On them? what? What on security? Six, it's all security account. On number six of the 0003 form, the application to withdraw tribal funds from trust status. It says, Docket number or other identification of trust funds. You put down the social security number number. if you're closing. Listen, okay? If it says docket number, that means a court case number. Okay? Right. The court writes up a charge. The court writes a charge, and then basically they have a trust with bonds associated behind it. Okay, that's what we're shutting down because basically they're not supposed to be doing that to us because we're an American Indian. Okay, we're exempt, and basically we have the right of resolution out here. And uh, what the hell the other one was down below there? Uh, I wasn't. I, I was. I was. The, that part was clear about the court case part. I was asking about the the number on the front of the card or the number on the back of the card for the social what security. What came account. first, the chicken or the egg? The social security number on the front came first. Okay, you let the other take care of itself. 
<laughs> okay? It's the Social Security Trust Fund that basically is what we're after. That other is another security that's out there. And basically, when you get the men in black to come and see you, they will go after the driver's license. They will go after the certificate of title. They will go after the marriage license. They will go after the fishing license, the hunting license, all these other pieces of bullshit that are out here. That number on the back of the Social Security, they'll go after that. Hmm. They will bring in all of those tribal funds back into the reservation. But you have to declare that you're an American Indian and that you want to terminate that stuff. So would we do one of these forms for uh, each court case, for the Social Security number, for the Certificate of Live Birth? No, he just these? said he'll take care of it all. Right, but... You put a couple in, and basically they will see that you're in the door. Uh, now they will be coming to you, and they will probably go through everything with you. I see. Okay. This isn't going to be a five-minute uh, come and shake your hand and then leave type scenario. It's probably going to be a couple hours. Okay. They're probably going to get special identification from you, handprint, whatever. Okay. And you should have all your can. There's hard. It's hard to say what the hell is really going on. That's what I say. If you got a damn question, call the damn number. You sit here and you try and second guess every damn thing out here. And then you sit and basically try and reiterate what the hell I just tried to tell you. Yeah, don't get spoon-fed, everybody. Just think about it. Think about it. Talk amongst yourselves. Don't bother Patrick. You get in the door. You start identifying this to the Secretary of State. Basically, now you're standing in a completely different limelight out here. You're no longer a fucking idiot. At least you're not supposed to be. You're supposed to be someone that has some knowledge because you got to this damn door. Now act like you've got some damn knowledge. And I've been deadly wrong about that there's no stupid question out here. Mm. There's been one hell of a lot of stupid questions come across this damn phone conversations. Because you guys don't think before you open up your mouth. And that's 99% of the problem in this whole damn country. Yeah, like Patrick said before, you got to think about it, sleep it on it overnight, think about it again, and you have a, then you can't figure it out, you know, listen to the tape over again, then ask yep. a question with somebody yep. in the group. You can't spoon feed everybody. Yep. And you always pick something up new every time you listen to the call, too. And I take notes like crazy on each call. Yeah, yeah he's and, nice to avail. He's availing himself. But don't wear them out, guys. Well, yeah, and the, the, the key is before you answer the, ask, ask the question to somebody else, try to answer it yourself and, and really really go after it. And you really do know more than you think you know most of the time. So sometimes just asking the question is an easy way of avoid thinking about it yourself. True. Well, then we may as well not even open it up for questions. No, we need questions, but we need to also think about the questions, I mean, too. You know, I people feel there like have you been ask, some... ask a question, you get your head bitten off. Oh, no, you, I won't bite your head off if you ask 
the right question. But basically, when you're coming up with stuff, how do you know what the right question I, is without asking a question? You've got to think I don't, about I don't it. Disrupt the call. You've got to think about what the hell you're asking. Did he she already talk on, about yeah. that? She's offended. If he already she talked about up. it, then listen to the call again. Right. I mean, we had basic protocols like this before, you guys, when we started out. We're supposed to think about it overnight and listen to the to the, re- the recording or the conference call two or three times and right. then think about it. But it's like, don't wor- just... Don't wear people out. That's all. We're not. You don't have to spoon spoon fed us. Don't get spoon fed. That's all. But I'm asking for questions that are legitimate. Okay. Like the thing about going to the right state. Okay. You've got to think about that. Okay. You're born in this state. Okay. So you've got your account registered in there. That's the original reservation you came from. Now, you ask that question to the Office of Special Trustee. Okay? I don't know the answer to all these questions. That's what I mean. You've got to think about some of these questions you're asking. You're asking the wrong person the wrong question. That's not the question that I'm supposed to be answering for you. Right. When she's asking questions like if it's the number on the front or the back of a Social Security card, that's pretty stupid. Yeah, most people don't even know that there's a number on the back of the Social Security card. Yeah, that that has nothing to do with nothing. They've never gotten a new card. So they only have the one account number that they know of. Right, and there's no information on these forms asking for that. Yeah. So but we yeah. know that the, the Social Security number is being used as a trust fund accessing number. Because all the trust funds, your driver's license, your certificate of title, everything basically evolves around using that Social Security number to access your tribal uh, estate funds. Right, like under I asked. your cert- registration number or I asked I- one of those, IM number. I asked one of those DMV clerks one time, like, uh, hey, we're not supposed to have to provide the Social Security number for anything. It's not supposed to be used for ID. And he says, yep. well, we're not authorized to give you a license then. No. Well, they're well. just saying they can't give you a license because... You know. Yeah, they want to have that because they need to have that number to uh, basically put in the trust to write the bonds for that license. Right. right. It's all you... about securities, yeah, stocks security. and commodities, securities Numbers. exchange. Mm-hmm. You want to know more about it? Go and read some of the books from Payne Weber or... Uh, A.G. Edwards, get some of their stocks and commodity brochures, yeah, it's because all black that's market. all that this is. It's all black market securities. It's all a fraud. Yeah. It's Did all you say a A.G. Edwards? Game. Huh? Did you say A.G. Edwards? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, they're a commodity broker. They're a stock broker. Just they like Payne Weber. Everything. Payne Weber's the same way. They deal in commodities. They deal in stocks. Right. Dean Witter, all them people. Yeah, Dean Witter's another one. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them out there. Really? Okay. And it's all a big game. It's a crap game. Right. It's a bunch of crap. Question. And you're going to lose 90% of the time because the big boys have more items that they can use against you as the little guy. Mm-hmm. And they can Question. eat you up right and spit stuff. you out. Right. How many, how many insurance companies paid on Katrina or Sandy Hook, Hurricane, or any of that? They all bailed. Yeah. 
And see, that's one of the things in that movie, uh, Now You See Me, that was brought out about the damn insurance company, uh, raped the whole people that were, all the people that were in the audience there at the Savoy down in New Orleans. But yet the, the magicians there basically took all the funds out of the guy's account and basically gave it back to the people. See, they were the good guys. The magicians were. Mm-hmm. Hey, well, congratulations, Jeff and Patrick, for finding out this uh, this agency with the uh, Office of Special uh, Trustee and, and, and the uh, MIBs. I mean, you know, that is a big bingo. Well, it was basically going back through and trying to find out about homesteading in this country, that I got onto this. Because I went back and found out, uh, going through the first six volumes of the statutes at large, and basically there was not one mention about homesteading in there. But there was about preemptive entry. And all the public lands up until... uh, 19 or 1848 or 49 were controlled by the Secretary of the Treasury. In 1849, they were transferred over and they set up the Department of Interior. That's when all the public lands went to there. Well, then researching a little more, finding out that that's where we had to go now to put our preemptive entry taking the public lands out and putting them into the private. But they kept talking about unappropriated lands. Well, see, our land claim is already appropriated. It was appropriated to us at birth. All we have to do is a re-entry onto the scene and claim our Assets, but we have to do it as an American Indian. So the reentry document that I did about a month, two months ago, whatever, it was still a valid form that I just needed to address that I was coming in on the Indian reservation, on the public Indian reservation, and taking my private land into a private reserve as a private homestead. Yeah, and also you said the reservation, which is like the artificial person that they put all the assets in, whether it was the afterbirth or uh, artificial person, figuratively speaking, was a reservation. And in order to get it, you had to go on the reservation to get your reservation. You have to go to, like if you go in and you make a reservation at Geno's, yeah. okay, restaurant, you can't go to McDonald's and claim your reservation over there at Geno's. You have to go into Geno's on the date that your reservation is slated for and claim that reservation. Right. Okay? It's yeah, that it's a good simple. explanation. It's a real good explanation. Yeah, yeah. you've got to go to the right place and basically put in your claim. To put your butt down. Yeah, Patrick. The place for your butt. Patrick, on on the facts header sheet where you say there are four more pages to be attached, that's the preemption uh, document and the homestead exemption. That's what I was going to put on there. Okay. 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 You can modify that and just put uh, uh, this uh, the old three form in with it and send it in. Uh, you can uh, modify it and put uh, the 004 form and send it in. Okay. You can call them up and ask them, do they need to have a wedding signature uh, copy sent in, or can you take this by fax? Good. Will do. Yeah, 
You can put it on the fax cover sheet. They say, I'm sending you a uh, this fax, but if you need the wedding signature, let me know, and I will send that by mail. Don't argue with them, but ask them. Unless you ask the question, and especially unless you ask the question why, you're never going to get the answers you want. Mm-hmm. And if you come in and try and argue, you'll never get an answer. Good, thank you. And I know I'm sort of like uh, uh, what that one guy was telling me yesterday, that the first thing that's formed in the womb is basically the asshole. Well, I may be one of the biggest assholes out here, but I don't give a shit. That's some specialized specialized information there. A few people know that. You've always got to have a place to sit, okay? Yeah. And then we've also got to have a place to do something else, too, <laughs> to get rid of all the bullshit that we're fed. Yeah, this is looks like uh like you said we're completely uh parked the car here now. That's what it seems like. Right. And and it really is very straightforward and simple. Yep. Hey Pat, you might be an asshole, but you're amazing at what you do. I, I just I I <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm um, not stupid, but I don't know, you know, <laughs> even if I did this full time, uh, sir, I don't think I'd have been able to come across <laughs> and you come across it so quick, <laughs> you know, it's like every day, uh, and it's always, you know, gold nuggets of information. I really appreciate it. I really well, do. Well, that's the thing. Once you get your mind onto a role like this, mm-hmm. okay, and that's what is the aggravating part of it, is when basically you run into stumbling blocks that uh, people try and keep you from going forward in your train of thought and knowledge. And that's what probably is more aggravating than anything in the whole endeavor. Because once you really get on a roll into uh, knowledge and understanding of the truth, there is no stopping you, okay? You're a locomotive that is uh, hell-bent for uh, the home station. And you're going to get there. You're going sort after them on with autopilot. Those barrels. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's like being on autopilot, really. Yeah, you can see the finish line, and you're going to cross that finish line. I can see it. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, we have some very good labor to do tomorrow. Just like I like the movie Secretariat. And basically there's a lot of uh, good uh, understanding in that movie. Is that the horse race movie? Yep. Yeah. I think I've seen that one. No, Seabiscuit. Seabiscuit. Oh, Seabiscuit. Yeah, yeah. Now, the one that was in the 1930s or whatever. Yeah, it wasn't that big a horse, but it could run really good. Yeah. She had the stamina that basically she could take on anybody. Yeah, that horse that was from California. I'm going to listen to the call because I missed a good bit of it, so I'm going to get off here. Patrick, thank you very much. I'm just going to wait for the recording. Have a good night. Thanks for everything you're doing. I, I really do appreciate okay. it. Okay. Good night. Good night.
Good night. Good night. Can I get the uh, recording uh, calling number, the playback number? Oh, if you don't want to, if you do it on a computer, I'm pretty sure it's the same number. Instead of 1200, it's 1299, and then you queue in the same PIN number. Because I had to do it that way when my computer was down. I'm not on a computer, but... Um, yeah, if you're you not on a computer... Call, you just call in the same phone number, except instead of 1200 at the end... You type in 12999 or 1299, yeah. okay? And then you put the same PIN number, 111106 pound, in, and then you can listen to the recording as long right. as there hasn't been another recording made right. after that. Right. You only get the latest recording, but we do okay. have all the recordings on file. Yeah, yeah, that's for the, the guy recording without for the last computer. night. As soon as this one gets post or gets uh, finished, uh, basically that other recording from last night will no longer be available on the phone line. All right. Okay. Then you would have to get it downloaded off the computer somehow, or have one of your buddies download it for you. Put it on an MP3, a CD, so you can listen to it. Cool. I can do it. Or call them up and have them play it over the their computer with their uh, intercom phone on. Pardon? Have your friend play it on their computer with your phone listening. Okay, that's a good idea. If you can't, if you no, you, best, best off just go visit your friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get take, a, take a six pack with you and basically go there and listen to it. I will get it. Just yeah. don't get drunk, okay? <laughs> if you're going to drink, do it moderately, okay? I really hate drunks. Yeah, mm. that's no and basically, I haven't had a drink in about 14 years, but I'm not one of these real diehard guys. I can stand being around people that want to drink, but I don't need to drink anymore. Uh, basically, as soon as you start gaining the knowledge and the understanding and you start putting your mind at rest on other things, you'll see that in some cases you don't need those other things. I still have one crutch. I still have smoking, okay? But I have an understanding about smoking that is a lot different than most people out here and that basically uh, the tar and the nicotine are both good for you in an endeavor that you, basically, it helps enlighten the mind, the nicotine, the tar helps plate out uh, all of the other bullshit that's in the air from going into your lungs. Mm. Mm. See, tar was one of the essentials out here from way back, even prior to Abraham in this process. Right, waterproofed. And uh, hemp was one of the key elements of vegetation out here because that uh, product can produce more than a thousand different byproducts. Mm -hmm. And it was never uh, under the all the PCPs or whatever the hell they have put THC. into them now yeah. THC. Uh, with the drugs that yeah. basically Timothy O'Leary and the, the MIK Ultra people basically genetically altered the damn thing to get a, uh, they took a good marijuana use or industrial hemp use because the leaves and everything else were natural uh, pathic drugs and they turned it into now a uh, polluted genetically altered drug out here like most everything else they've done the earth was given all of the essential plants and vegetation and all the remedies for mankind for all diseases out here 
even snake bites. Okay, the venom from some snakes will counteract the venom from other snakes. Hmm. The other reason there was a big push for smoking was in the 50s and the 60s, but what were they testing in the atmosphere back then? Gee, nuclear weapons. There's also been scientific research that shows tobacco smoking actually coats and protects your lungs from those particles. And then after 30 years goes by, people don't need to smoke as much. So they start the no smoking campaign. But it's in, that's one report you'll probably hardly ever find on the Internet. Yeah, and charcoal is a filtering system for the body. But basically, uh, I don't think that they had too many outside fires uh, in the Indian teepees. They didn't cook outside that much. They basically had their smoke right inside. Mm. Basically, they had their sweat lodges. Basically, the smoke, the steam, basically purifies the body. Mm. And that's what 99% of these people in this country really need is a good smoke out. Hmm. Purify your damn body. Get rid of some of the damn bullshit that's in your lungs. 90% of the people in this country live in metropolitan areas, and basically what are they breathing that's more deadly than any cigarette? The fumes yeah. from automobiles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's from funny, the catalytic yeah. converters. The American Indian had to sweat lodge all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you purify your body. So you think the nicotine, like, stimulates uh, nerve endings and, and the thought process? That- it also helps purify and cleanse the arteries and everything else. Okay. Like, like oh, I know what you're saying, like pathogens. It kills other pathogens. Well, no, it basically just flushes, helps flush things out. Oh, okay, okay? platelets, platelets and yeah. stuff? Okay. Because you've got other uh, items in there that are brought in with the oxygen and nitrogen that you're breathing constantly into your lungs that are in there, and basically the other carcinogens that are getting into your blood system. And you need to have a means to get try and get rid of some of those out of your system. That's what's causing the cancers and everything in most people. And then also, worry is one of the biggest things. Mm-hmm. And basically, now, with this item here, your money situation should be, you should never have to worry again. But just don't screw it up and get back into a damn commercial bank. You keep a damn cookie jar or a damn foot locker or a damn mattress or whatever, a floorboard safe, a coffee can in the backyard, or you get a debit card and put the funds in that debit card. They can't utilize funds if they're in a debit card. They can't write bonds against them. Mm. Now, in some cases, if these cards go through the ATM, yeah, you're going to pay a buck fifty, but turn around, you take all those receipts, and you can claim those back. You turn them into your reservation agent. And they will put a draw against the debt that those corporations owe back to the reservation. That's how you set off the national debt. Like I said before, All these receipts that we get out here 
are receipts and transportation or transit, whatever the term in the dictionary was. And basically, they're not fully settled. You have to take them in. All they're doing is allowing you to take that piece of uh, the groceries out of the grocery store. But they have not been properly settled. You have to turn them in to settle the account, and basically then you will be paid back those funds. Because, see, all these corporations, these public corporations, they have to operate. They have to borrow money every year. And who are they borrowing the money from? They're Mm -hmm. borrowing it from the tribal reservation accounts. Hmm. I've told you this I don't know how many times, Tom. So don't hum this. You should have already known this. I've said it over and over again. Well, that is just the identification that is a tribal account. That that's new, but it makes perfect sense. Yeah, well it's the same yeah, it's the same account that I was talking about before. It's just now that we know the right name for it. Right. Okay. See, I was close on some of this about four years ago when I, the first embosser that I was doing was for a tribunal, for a tribe uh, out here. The tribe of Patrick or the tribe of Divine, whatever I called it at that time. Mm. So now and you know was, made a full circle, huh? Yeah, they see, but see, I didn't see that the public lands were really a reservation. And see, that's what most people don't understand. They don't know what that Tenth Amendment in the Bill of Rights really says. That right there is something is reserved then it has to create a reservation. Until you come in and claim your seat at the table. Well hidden, right and right and right under our feet. No, and the people in this country don't realize that we have more power than the president of this country. He's an elected official. We are an established government official. Okay, we're not voted in. We can't be voted out. Yeah, you call it post of office. Right. Yeah. Well, it soars my spirit to hear the truth and get closer and closer. This is great. Now, see, as soon as you become a tribal uh, chief and claim your seat at the uh, reservation table, now you will become one of the state electors out here in the process of the reservation. That's what the electors are. But, see, nobody has been filling those tribal seats So they've been filling them in with the general public people that they see the corporations have been putting in into the process because the people didn't know that we had to claim our tribal seat at the reservation table. 
And that's what the whole book of Luke is, too. You said that early on. Yeah. Claiming your inheritance. Not living with the dead and not eating the slop from the pigs. Come back and 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 receive your inheritance that your father wants to give you. Quit screwing around. Yeah. Okay, anybody else have anything other? If not, it's almost two hours into this damn thing, so yeah. I don't want yeah, to make it too terribly long. It's, it's a superb yeah. call, Patrick. Thank you. Uh, I know exactly what to get down to tomorrow. Okay. You go ahead and stop the recording now, Tom, and then basically if you guys want to talk uh, okay. other stuff uh, that... Uh, yeah, try and keep the recording down to the the key information, and then uh, if you guys want to talk over the other stuff, you can. That's what I usually do. Uh, if, uh, if you okay. need, if honest, if something really important. Hey, I'm Patrick, I'm still on my quest trying to get a hold of Chris Summers. Yeah. I got a call from my friend that lived with him, uh, and we're I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to track him down. I'm going to call Gary back and find out where Chris is at. And I never thought I was uh, American Indian. I always thought I was Asian Indian, I guess. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well, everybody wants to claim their nationality. Like, my mom still wants to claim that she's Irish. I said, you've been over here too damn long. You're you're no longer Irish, okay? Mm. That may have been where you came from, but basically that's not what you really are, okay? If you we were born here in on... this country, and basically you came from the soil of America, you didn't come from the soil of Ireland. Yeah, but what if you are living here, but you weren't born here? Well, then you had to be naturalized, okay? Then I am. Question. Okay, then and I that was native. after seven years, okay? Yes. You had to have a time limit yes. to be allowed into the tribe. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Okay. So I am here. I am here. Yep. Okay. See, they've got laws on the books allowing uh, transplants to come into the tribe. But you have to wait a certain period of time and be on good honor and everything and understanding to be brought into the tribe. When you think about all of these laws and everything, it fits right to the T more about being in an Indian tribe than it does anything else out here. Especially when you separate every all these other bullshit laws that are corporate laws out of the picture and just look at the real laws, then when you start looking at the real laws and you know that you're not a corporation and you're not uh, under another governmental system, the only governmental system that really fits in this country is the Indian reservation system. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of our founding fathers were, were basically Indians. They weren't all out of England or out of Spain or out of uh, wherever, Portugal, the Netherlands, Germany, Scotland, Ireland. A lot of them were basically bred here in this country, and they were just as white as most of those Europeans that came over because basically they've been interbreeding with the Scots and the Irish for thousands of years before the damn uh, Christopher Columbus ever uh, found the damn little islands down the Caribbean. He never did find the real America. But yet, the people in this country honor him as all as though he was some damn stinking god. T 
just to have another stinking damn holiday to mess up us people. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to drop off here. You go ahead and call oh, okay. so you guys can continue on. I'm yeah, thank you very you much, later. Patrick. Okay, okay bye. Thank you, Patrick. Good Good night. Thank you for the guidance.